TNCRadio.live, your commercial driver navigation station. Good afternoon. This is TNCRadio.live, and this is the Truckers Network Radio Show with your host, Shelly Johnson. Oh, thank you, Tom. Yes, this is the Truckers Network Radio Show on TNC Radio Live, where we offer the entertainment, sports, weather, traffic, and news that commercial drivers like to hear. You know, many of our drivers are veterans, and we're quickly coming up on Memorial Day, a time set aside to remember our fallen heroes. Today, we have Don Queenie, the Director of Transportation for Reads Across America. This is an organization that remembers our American heroes who made the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom. Reads Across America's mission is to remember our fallen U.S. veterans, honor those who serve, and teach our children the value of freedom. Welcome, Don. Thank you so much for being on the show again. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it very much. For those unfamiliar, uh, could you tell us a little bit about what is Reads Across America? I know you're a very active organization. You create awareness year-round for our fallen heroes. We are. We are year-round. It's um it's a Reeds Cross, Reeds Cross America is a day in December. This year it's December 18th, and it's um, it's handled around the country in all 50 states, including Hawaii and Alaska, where um, we have been able to ship fresh balsam wreaths to uh, various locations that participate, um, almost 2,700 to date, and uh, almost 2 million volunteers will assist us in laying wreaths on that day. But Reeds Cross America started humbly by our founder, who um, is Moral Worcester, and had a vision after having an overrun of, of, um, of uh, REITs. And uh, it started out as a personal mission, became a nationwide event that um, everybody that it ever, it ever touches um, gets very, very into it. And we usually keep all of our volunteers for years to come. You have a lot of professional drivers involved in making this happen every year, too. We do. We do. We couldn't do this mission without the uh, the generosity of the trucking industry, whether it be a, a, a big multinational type of trucking firm, a railroad, all the way down to an individual uh, owner operator. Uh, we we average about 500 tracks of trailer loads a year, uh, com- a fresh balsam uh, reefs out of the state of Maine. And we do that with about 386 uh, different companies. Um, A number of companies handle more than one load. We uh, ship uh, out of Maine via rail to the West Coast, where other carriers pick it up from there. We um, ship to the middle of the country, the heartland, the same way by over-the-road truck. And then a lot of trucks do through the line halls uh, uh, from point A to point B, many of them with multiple stops. And... um, I'll tell you, there's not a driver that uh, that I know of that's ever done this and hasn't had some sort of an experience that makes them want to do it again. It's it's uh, such a wonderful tribute. And how do people get involved? I know that um, people can get the wreaths and then they can place it um, at, at a cemetery uh, locally. Am I correct? What, what's the process behind that? So the process for volunteers, and it could be an individual, it could be a family. Uh, we encourage people to bring out their family, especially the children. But corporations uh, can do this, too. Uh, they may want to come out as a team and be a part. Um, but the first step would be to find out a uh, location that, that participates. You know, there are a lot of national cemeteries, and we are participating in almost every one, uh, state cemeteries. But your local cemetery in your town, uh, the, the churchyard that you participate, that you go to, uh, they may be participating as well. And uh, you can find out who's participating by going on to our website, which is wreathsacrossamerica.org. And uh, on there, there's a location where you can find out where we participate. Um, And those who are uh, get real excited about Wreaths Across Across America and find that a cemetery that uh, they're familiar with is not participating, uh, that is how we grow, by people volunteering, standing up and saying, I want this cemetery, I want the cemetery where my father is buried to, to be part of this. And uh, you would become a location coordinator and we would add you to our uh, volunteers that do that. It's, it's such a wonderful tribute because uh, we do not want to forget our fallen soldiers because they are 
They're what keep America free. And you do a lot of that in terms of education. Uh, what type of educational programs are you engaged in year round? Anytime we can uh, spread the word about the sacrifices that the veterans um, do for us, have done for us and their families, uh, we take that opportunity. Um, just recently, we've had a, uh, a memorial placed on our tip land, the, the land where the forests are, where we take the tips off the branches and make wreaths, where we, un- we unveiled a new memorial for something that not a lot of people know about. We t- I think we've taught um, hundreds of thousands of people about the Tiger Lines flight that perished in 1962 in the Pacific with no trace. And um, that was 92 combat veterans that uh, have not been recognized by our government because of the mission they were on. And they um, uh, are now recognized on our tip land. So we educate um, in various different ways, uh, in addition to our education trailer that uh, has been out on the road since the 1st of February. And um, so we, we do it any, any opportunity we can to uh, teach anybody a little bit more about Reeds Caucus America and um, let them be aware of what our veterans uh, do and what have you. The awareness you're creating is marvelous and, and, and so very needed because I think people have short memories. And, and I think a lot of people uh, think Memorial Day is just a good day to have a backyard barbecue. They don't really think uh, there's a reason we have this holiday. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, I think we're all guilty of that a little bit. And, uh, but anytime you can take a, a moment and, and use Memorial Day to remember our veterans um, and thank a veteran whenever you get a chance, uh, you're living up to the legacy. And that is our uh, theme for this year, um, live up to their legacy. And, um, you know, it doesn't take much. It doesn't take much to make a, uh, a veteran or a service member uh, appreciated. So, um, I try to do that every time I get a chance and let's all remember what Memorial Day really is about. It's, uh, it's memory. You know, there's a difference between Memorial Day and Veterans Day and Memorial Day is remembering those who uh, have perished and have uh, left us, uh, after they have served. Absolutely. Uh, what did catch our attention was the ceremony that your nonprofit organized to honor the victims of the Flying Tiger Line Flight 739. Um, I'm not sure everyone really knows about what that was all about. Could you kind of tell us how did that event uh, and your involvement uh, occur? So a little bit of background about that flight. Um, That was in 1962. And if if those that know, um, know that we weren't uh, that deeply involved with Vietnam just yet. And this flight left out of California uh, with 11 crew members, 92, I think is the number of uh, soldiers, American soldiers, and three Vietnamese, South Vietnamese nationals. And uh, what their mission was is unknown and, and probably will never be known. But um, after refueling in, I think, Guam, uh, they lost radio contact. Um, there was a sighting of this by a uh, freighter that was out in the ocean at the time. And their description of the uh, the explosion and whatnot uh, led it to believe that uh, lots of lots of rumors began happening of what happened. But they did search the our government did search for the plane and found zero traces, not a single piece of float from anywhere. And um, the families got very little answers about what happened, um, what they were doing, um, all of this. And um, there was no recovery, of course, of any bodies. So the families were left in, in limbo, and there's a particular woman um, in Portland, Maine, who is a Reef Across America participant, and uh, it's her, un- her uncle was one of the uh, service members on that flight. So doing what we all do, and we all try to get up to our tip land and, in Maine and, and learn more about what goes on and participate in some of the events, she did that and met our founder, Moral Worcester, um, and got into the conversation about the Flying Tigers flight. And once our founder found out about that and found out that their names are not on the Vietnam Wall in uh, Washington, D.C., he wanted to try to correct that. And he offered to create a memorial uh, and do it right. And he did. It, the, this 37,000-pound granite uh, piece of granite with their names all etched in marble uh, is sitting in a, um, like a roundabout, if you will. Uh, there's a road, the road goes around it. People will be passing this by all the time. Um, it's a private road that goes back into our, uh, our farm there and uh, it's got a flag and a lot of beautiful flowers. And, um, so he wanted to do that and he did. 
uh, man, the man puts something on his mind and he gets it done. That's and um, one of the best things that came from this is the healing from others. We had, um, don't quote me on this because I couldn't have been, been there. I, I actually was at an event for one of our trucking partners down in uh, uh, Georgia. But um, I, I believe 12, 15, maybe more families came out. Some of them from California, Utah, um, all parts of the country. And for the first time, met one another and were able to share stories that they, you know, that they had and share photographs and share all of these things. And, um, uh, you know, the, the memorial is beautiful and it's going to do a lot of healing. But getting these families together for the first time, that was another side, side thing that happened that um, was a bonus. And so uh, this memorial, yeah, this memorial will stand in perpetuity out on uh, uh, down East Maine. And uh, we now have a way of remembering these uh, fine men. It's shocking they weren't included on the Vietnam Memorial. Uh, they were truly forgotten. That's terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I can't get into that. I, I don't know. Um, I, uh, all I got was what I, to be honest with you, two years ago, I didn't know anything about this. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I imagine many of your listeners might be wanting to look it up. But I, I did my proverbial Wikipedia search, and uh, I believe I believe it had to do with the fact that they weren't combat-related. Uh, uh, okay. injuries or losses, but they were certainly sent over there. There were 90 some odd Rangers on a plane and there was something going on and oh, um, the mission was top. Yeah. And the mission was top secret. So if that's not combat related, I'm not quite sure what it is. So, uh, but that's uh, not for right. me to say. That's just what I think. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, you know, um, they <laughs> fell through the cracks. Um, well, and, um, uh, yeah, somebody they, misclassified they, them. They were not on their way to a birthday party. No, exactly. No, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Wow. Yep. So now they're remembered, and uh, and that's teaching. I mean, that's te- we we've who knows how many people we've taught about that event and uh, made them realize. So um, we 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 remembered them by um, by by creating this monument and uh, placing wreaths on there the other day, and there'll be those wreaths will be laid there every every wreath across America Day, and their names will be read out loud at least once a year. Um, by our staff and by ourselves and hopefully myself. Um, and then we honor them by, by, by doing just what we did by, by placing this beautiful marker. And then we're teaching, um, we're teaching people about uh, patriotism, about um, uh, the event, and uh, we're honoring them and teaching people how to honor our veterans. So it, it, it's all, all ties right in. That's so wonderful, and that's a wonderful tribute for them. We're talking with Don Queenie, the Director of Transportation for Reeds Across America here on TNC Radio Live. This is the Truckers Network radio show. Stay tuned for more. Don's got some great information for you. Stay tuned. This info blog on TNC Radio Live is brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. Six things to consider before starting your career in trucking. Truck drivers are often referred to as the backbone of America. They haul roughly 70% of America's freight. Nearly every good consumed in the United States has been shipped by a truck. Right now, the demand for truck drivers is higher than ever. The growing truck driver shortage in America is a topic of concern and has been for the past four years. The United States is in dire need of people to start driving trucks. Are you considering becoming a truck driver, but not quite sure if it's the career path for you? Here are six things potential truck drivers need to know before starting their career in the trucking industry. Know your why. Why do I want to become a truck driver? Is one of the first questions you should ask yourself before starting your career in trucking. Knowing and understanding your why is important so that you make sure that trucking is something you'll enjoy. Nothing is more draining than working in a career field that you're not passionate about and excited about. Truck drivers are already more likely to struggle with mental health problems because of the trucking lifestyle. So to avoid dreading your trucking career, ask yourself, why do I want to be a truck driver? Long work hours. It's obvious that truck drivers spend a majority of their workday in the driver's seat. But many new drivers don't realize how hard it can be sitting for long periods. Drivers spend hours upon hours sitting down. This can result in leg, back, and neck pain. If you're the type of person who cannot handle sitting down for several hours at a time, then truck driving is not for you. Another thing to consider is how long a typical workday is for a truck driver. Drivers are legally allowed to work 14 hours a day, but are limited to 11 hours of driving time. 
they must take a mandatory 30-minute break by the eighth hour of duty. Following the long workday, drivers must have 10 hours of off-duty time. In a work week, drivers cannot exceed more than 60 hours of work or 70 hours over eight days. Failure to follow these HOS rules can result in being shut down, fines, and lower carrier safety ratings. A new lifestyle. There's not a career quite like trucking. It's nothing like your typical 9 to 5 Monday through Friday job. It's long hours, days, and most times weeks away from home. Truck drivers often experience loneliness, depression, and anxiety. If you're someone who's used to working with many people, then truck driving will be a shock. Drivers will go days or weeks without seeing their loved ones, and it can really take a toll on truckers, especially those who are new. Adjusting to this lifestyle can be challenging at first, but once you do, you can live a rewarding life as a truck driver. Getting seat time. The more experience you have as a truck driver, the better. With more experience, you'll land better truck driving jobs and better pay. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, truck drivers earn an average of over $40,000 a year. Yet, many trucking companies advertise higher rates of pay for experienced drivers. Over time, you can negotiate a higher rate per mile. Your relationships will suffer. It doesn't matter if you're on the road or at home. Make time for family. Make it a priority to talk to someone in your family once a day. It can be tough for truckers, especially long-haul truck drivers, to maintain relationships with their families due to the trucking lifestyle. Keeping in contact with your loved ones will help life on the road be less lonely. Lack of sleep. Getting the recommended amount of sleep each night is a rare thing for truckers. Although sleep may be difficult for truckers because of the uncomfortable way of living, it's essential to their well-being and safety. Make it a priority to get good sleep and make a sleep schedule. Set an alarm for a certain time and turn off all electronics and get your much needed sleep. Not getting enough sleep makes life on the road miserable. Although there may seem like many downsides, truck driving can be a very rewarding and exciting career. As a truck driver, you have freedom on the open road and the chance to see America's most beautiful places. For information on trucking, be sure to check out the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net tncradio.live your commercial driver navigation station this is the truckers network radio show on tncradio.live i'm shelly johnson here with tom kelly and tom kirk we're talking with don queenie of reeds across america this is an organization which continuously honors our fallen heroes who've kept america free don could you tell us a little bit more about what your organization does um, you've got a lot of activities going on this year what are you involved with so I personally uh, have two hats. I am director of transportation, as you said, but I'm also director of the mobile education exhibit. And a mobile education exhibit is a 48 foot uh, trailer with four slides, It's about 1500 square feet. We have um, a little theater in there and then interactive um, computers as well as storyboards. And uh, we travel from uh, various locations. Uh, we're usually it's host driven where a location coordinator, somebody that's in charge of a cemetery or maybe a sponsorship group. We do a lot of work with the Daughters of the American Revolution. So we, uh, my job is to set up these, uh, these events, uh, get the unit there with our driver ambassador and his fiance and set up and uh, do just that, teach, uh, meet people. One of the things we've been doing in that is uh, we've been uh, offering the 50th commemorative pin uh, uh, commemorating the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War. We have a, a beautiful pin that's government sponsored. It's uh, uh, produced by the government and it has, uh, we have also a proclamation that's on a heavy paper that's signed by the commander in chief. And uh, we uh, offer that to the Vietnam veterans. We, we pin them, we look them in the eye, we welcome them home. And then we offer them a, uh, we have a ball cap that has their campaign ribbon and the Wreaths Across America logo embroidered on it. Uh, we offer them that and a, a beautiful challenge coin. Uh, the Veterans Commission uh, actually recognizes Reeds Across America as one of the most prolific organizations pinning the Vietnam veterans and welcoming them home. And as of um, 
you know, we've been doing this for a while, but we've started counting uh, what we've been doing on the mobile education exhibit. Um, I call it ET for education trailer. Uh, so when we're out on ET since the 1st of July of last year, we've pinned uh, our 500th Vietnam veteran last week out in, uh, um, I think it was Willows, California at an event. So we're very, very proud of that. That's and then I also am direct. Yeah. And then I'm also director of transportation. And in that, my job is to uh, recruit and retain carriers, drivers, uh, logistics people in any shape and form to help us move the mission uh, come December. I think what you're doing, welcoming the Vietnam vets back home is so important because uh, so many of them really were not given a hero's welcome. If anything, they were spat upon. I know I've uh, yeah. have had a family member who was in Vietnam, and that was that was just so very wrong. Uh, it's hard to believe that we treated in that way. That at different times, and it was a very uh, tenuous time. And I get it, and uh, um, it was wrong. But um, it's it's part of our freedom to express ourselves. So they were fighting for that. But it, it was wrong. But I'll tell you, we um, <clears throat> I, I'd like to think that we might have healed um, some of those wounds. And I think America's gotten woken up to, to this issue. And, and um, but doing what we do and I have been, you know, dozens and dozens of, of fine men and women. Uh, I personally have but, um, pinned two women that were in country and um, uh to be able to hear their stories and hear what it was like for them, um, you know, coming off the plane in the middle of the night, told them to take the uniforms off and pilot. And uh, one, one fellow told a story about how there were boxes of clothes, uh, used clothes in this room at the airport. And they were told to just find something that fits and put it on. And it was clothes of the time is hippie clothes. And some of these guys are like, I don't want to wear these hippie clothes, but anyway, and, um, and to hear the stories. And I had a little, thing that I, I tell them because I was not in Vietnam and I have not served. Um, so sometimes I feel unworthy to to welcome them home. But I tell them, I look them in the eye and I say, listen, I, I didn't serve, but I still care. Uh, when you came home, I was probably a 17 or 18 year old punk riding around on a bike, drinking beer, smoking pot, chasing girls. But what I didn't do, what I wasn't doing is I wasn't throwing rocks at your bus. And uh, I want to thank you now for your service and, and welcome you home. And it seems to work. Um, it chokes me up about every time I do it. Yeah. And uh, I'm very proud to be to be part of it. Well, you are doing your service and recognizing our veterans, recognizing our fallen heroes. That's something that uh, makes America America. And if it weren't for them, mm-hmm. we wouldn't be here enjoying a conversation even, you know, when you think about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, freedom no, comes so right. with a price and they make the ultimate yeah. sacrifice. Yep. Yep. You're absolutely correct. And the families do too. You know, we, <clears throat> I try to recognize, I, I live in Norfolk, Virginia. Um, there's a hundred thousand active military service members in my town, my neighborhood, my community and the families. Um, you know, we, well, I still own a trucking company and my trucking company specializes in moving and storage of military families. And we see what the families go through. So the families serve every day as well. Oh, yeah. And uh, I do what I can to try to recognize that. That's got to be a tough life when you think about it. You're being moved from here. Uh, mm-hmm. as, as somebody would say, hither to yon. I mean, you never know where you're going to end mm-hmm. up. <laughs> yeah, the stories are just unbelievable. I mean, they keep me in, they keep me in business and keep my kids in shoes. But um, uh, I, love, I love trying to help a family. I mean, I, I, I'll, little side note. I mean, I've been in customers' homes with a wife on a satellite phone with her husband in Baghdad wanting to know what goes in the garage and what doesn't. Oh, jeez. Literally. Uh, yeah. That's got to be really yeah. tough. I mean, uh, <laughs> and they're always living on edge, too, because if, if they're in a combat zone, they don't know uh, from mm-hmm. day to day, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And our instant communications aren't like, you know, mailing a letter and getting it getting it three weeks later. This is instant communications. Sure and uh, Yeah. So, I mean, they're tweeting from foxholes over there. And um, so anyway, oh. yeah. Well, at least technology has allowed them to stay in touch. Uh, during the time of the Vietnam War, a lot of the soldiers would, uh, they'd mail letters or they'd tape conversations and mm. then their wife would send back a reel to reel so they could listen to each other's voices. I mean, that, but it took yeah. however long it took to get back to, you know, Vietnam. 
Yeah, yeah, that's amazing that how technology advances itself and they decide that. that's that's awesome to hear that. You're right. Mhm. Well, I think what you do do is is awesome as an organization. How often do you run into people who are just kind of amazed they weren't aware of some of the information that you're you're uh, sharing with them in terms of our heroes and the wars and various other things? Yeah. Um you know, I want to use the word all the time. Um you know, I haven't been out. I haven't been running that read that uh, our education exhibit like uh, my my team has. They see it every day, uh, every single day. Um, and I have a, a vehicle. I actually have a wrapped vehicle that has the uh, the Trucking Moves America logo on it, as well as Reads Across America logos. And about every time I, I fuel up, I, I interact with somebody or I, I'm at the supermarket or at the store, or whatever. And, uh, so often, um, people will ask, you know, what's, what, what's this rap all about? And, uh, gives me an opportunity to interact with folks. And, um, again, I, I personally, uh, live where I live. Uh, I'm so, we're so, um, uh, service member and veteran centric already because it's Norfolk, Virginia. So, um, but when I do get out of town, um, I get a lot of looks and people will come up and ask me about it. And uh, I love talking to them about what we do and what our veterans do. You're educating them. And I imagine maybe imparting knowledge that they didn't have, that they may not have learned in school. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Very, very true. So what exactly is in your exhibit? I guess um, we have about two minutes. Maybe you could kind of give a synopsis yeah. uh, of, of what you have on, in the exhibit. Yeah, I would encourage everybody to keep your eye out for it. Um, it stands out on the outside. We have a, a scene of Arlington National Cemetery with a case on and a flag draped coffin on it. And then another one of the Vietnam Wall with our wreaths on it at night with all the lights and inside, we have a 20-person uh, uh, little theater that we show videos about who we are and what we do. And then in the back, there are storyboards and interactive computers where folks can uh, look things up and learn more about us. We sell a little merchandise. We have a uh, mobile headstone that we put outside and put a flag behind it. And every day, we, pre- we um, place a fresh wreath on that headstone. Sometimes uh, folks choose to make a bit of a ceremony out of it and and I have a color guard and, and a chosen person to lay the uh, wreath and all. It's quite moving sometimes. So keep your eyes out for it on the road. And you can also find out where we'll be on our website, wreathsacrossamerica.org. Uh, go to special events, and there is a calendar for the next few weeks on any given time where we're going to be. Where are you going to be in the next uh, week or so? Do you know? Or yeah, I sure do. I, I better. Um, we're going to be uh, this weekend, Saturday Sunday and Monday uh, in the D.C. area. Saturday, we're at the Springfield, Virginia American Legion. On on um, Sunday, we're in, at the um, uh, at another location in Maryland, and then Monday, we're at the McLean uh, American Legion. Uh, after that, we're on uh, so that's Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. We're in uh, Sea Seaside Heights, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Uh, the um, that's, this is the, the New Jersey Truckers, uh, New Jersey Moving and Storage Association, and another organization are sponsoring us out there, uh, not far from the Jersey Shore. And then uh, we will be in Pennsylvania. Uh, after that, we've got I think twelve or fourteen stops throughout Pennsylvania uh, for June. Uh, two of them are at trucking companies, um, Jag Truck and RC Moore, and we're actually at the Pennsylvania Motor Truck Associations. Uh, near their headquarters in Harrisburg, uh, Pennsylvania, at a Mission Barbecue. And they got quite an event uh, set up there. So Wonderful. You are going to be a busy man, no doubt about that. <laughs> but what you're doing is, is absolutely wonderful for, for um, veterans as well as, as our fallen heroes. We're talking with Don Queenie of Reads Across America on the Truckers Network radio show. You're listening to TNC Radio Live. I'm Shelley Johnson here with Tom Kelly. We're going to be back with more from Don Queenie coming up. Definitely stay tuned. This blog on TNC Radio Live is brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. Six safety tips for truck drivers while driving in the rain. As a truck driver, you'll experience driving in dangerous weather conditions. Driving in the rain creates difficult and dangerous driving conditions for truckers. It's important for truck drivers to be alert and cautious when driving in the rain. Check out our six safety tips for truck drivers while driving in the rain. 
slow down. Wet roads make it difficult for a driver to control their truck. A good rule of thumb is to drive five miles per hour below the speed limit. In some cases, you might have to drive more than five miles an hour below. Professional truck drivers adjust their speed according to the weather. When driving in dangerous conditions, only drive the speed you're comfortable with. Leave space. Leaving the appropriate amount of space between each vehicle will give a truck driver enough time to react. A fully loaded tractor trailer traveling at 65 miles an hour needs about five seconds of space to stop. Drivers will have to increase the space between the cars while driving in dangerous weather conditions. Maintain your vehicle. Having your vehicle routinely checked will make driving in the rain more safe. Frequently check your truck's tires to make sure they have enough tread. Also, check your windshield wipers to see if they're working properly. Avoid standing water. Driving through standing water increases the chance of hydroplaning. Hydroplaning causes a driver to lose control of the truck and can result in serious injuries. Standing water also hides potholes and other debris that might be on the road. It's important to always avoid standing water while driving in the rain. Wear your seat belt. Wearing a seat belt is a requirement for all truckers, especially in dangerous weather conditions. Eliminate distractions. While driving in the rain, eliminate all distractions. If you drive with the radio on, turn the volume low so you can concentrate. Avoid touching your GPS or looking at it for long periods of time. And avoid using your cell phone. This blog on TNCRadio.live has been brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.com. .net. A report of child abuse is made every 10 seconds. These crimes can't be excused. Help Attica raise awareness. Donate or be an Attica member for just $25 a year. Become a hero for kids. Be a hero for Attica. You're listening to TNC Radio Dom Live. This is the Truckers Network Radio Show. I'm Shelby Johnson here with Tom Kelly and Tom Kirk. We're talking with Don Queenie of Reads Across America, an organization who is doing a wonderful job of honoring our fallen heroes who keep America free. Uh, Don, do you think that you're going to be back to normal with your activities this year? I know that 2020 presented quite uh, some serious obstacles with all of the shutdowns and everything yeah yeah 2020 was a challenge um to answer the question i sure hope so i believe it uh everything i'm seeing whether it be from cdc or from the news or just boots on the ground um i gotta believe that we'll be back to whatever normal is and uh we won't have the challenges um you know the challenges were immense and hats off to all of our location coordinators and the people that, uh, once again, boots on the ground, the people that actually get it done, um, finding ways of doing it uh, with the ever-changing CDC guidelines. If you remember, um, we were all still still learning what was what worked, what wouldn't work. Each state was doing things a little different. Communities were doing things different. And uh, each and every one of them, um, you know, literally, t- t- we were we had folks uh handing wreaths two wreaths on a nine foot pole to people in their car and letting them go into the cemetery get out and and lay the wreaths and say the names and then leave i mean that that's probably the extreme uh as compared to uh, eighty thousand people two years before at arlington national cemetery uh on national wreaths across america day uh, 80,000 people showing up to, to lay wreaths and honor veterans and uh, shoulder to shoulder all the way in. And what a difference. But they, we got it done. Um, our drive all the way from the uh, crews that were tipping the, the, the trees and making the wreaths. We had challenges there, uh, keeping them safe, keeping them quarantined amongst one another because we do use a lot of uh, um, temporary help that comes in from different parts of the country after harvesting apples or cherries or whatever they may be doing, they come up and make wreaths for us and, and work. And, you know, keeping them safe all the way to the drivers that came up and wanted to spend some time in our driver's lounge and meet their old friends and, and, and shoot the bull. Um, uh, we had to uh, limit the number of people that were in our driver's lounge. We set up an alternative tent outside with fire pits and all because it is winter in Maine when we do this and uh, yeah yeah and the uh, you know and then the drivers um, they were they'd already been used to this you know you, your listeners uh, um, never missed a beat 
uh, the trucking industry was probably one of the highlights of this whole COVID thing on how we, uh, our, our industry kept it going, kept things going. But they were pretty much used to uh, the mask, used to the social distancing as they picked up and received their shipments. So um, it wasn't too much of a stretch for them. We were able to uh, meet with a number of the drivers and, and get them out to our tip land and do what I call our first mile driver experience. I can tell you more about that. But um, and then once again, the once we made these deliveries, um, you know, people were a lot of people were scared, rightfully so, and uh, and nervous, and at the same time did not want to uh, miss a beat in honoring our veterans. Um, and uh, so we got it done. We were down on a number of wreaths, but we still laid 1.7 million wreaths awesome. at uh, 2,700 locations. Um, you know, we actually gained 300 locations during the middle of the, of the pandemic, which is awesome. Oh, that's amazing. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so we still still grew and uh, and we got it done. And as far as I know, we didn't have a single you know um, issue to talk about. Um, we did it safely and we got it done. So um, so this year we're hoping for, for big things and get back on our track of uh, growing by by leaps and bounds. The last uh, 10 or 12 years, we've grown almost by uh, 30% every year. So last year was our first, uh, you know, shrinkage. And um, we're hoping for a, for a real good year. I know that um, our uh, sponsorship groups across the country are, are out. Uh, spot- Try not to use the word fundraising. I almost said it. Um, uh, gaining sponsorships, seeking sponsorships for the Veterans Wreath is what we, right. we do. And uh can't say that I can quote exactly where we're at, but uh, I know we're doing fine, and uh, I think we'll have a very good year. 2020 was challenging for a lot of nonprofits because uh, they couldn't go out and, and talk to people. Uh, when you shut things down and isolate, it, it makes it really challenging. And um, for you to have any growth at all, I'd say that that was marvelous. Um, and yeah, that's, yeah, exactly. Because you, you even had some obstacles in terms of Arlington. I know that there was quite the outcry. I think Arlington was not <laughs> going to allow it. And, and then uh, yeah. people wrote to Congress and said, hey, wait a minute, <laughs> and got that turned around. That, uh, that, was, that was the most craziest 48 hours, I think, our organization has seen. I don't know. I, I wasn't removed from it. I wasn't at headquarters dealing with uh, our executive director and, and all that. But I was uh, fielding phone calls from, from trucking companies and everybody wanting to know, are we on? Are we on? And, um, yeah, so when you get uh, the Secretary of Army and or the President of the United States tweeting about you, uh, you you've gotten a little bit of their attention. Mm-hmm. And um and it, it went uh, from, uh, and you know, the, the funny thing about that was is that we'd been working with, and I was on this team, um, we, we, we offered the, uh, the, the players there about nine different scenarios in which we thought it should work. And, we, and they listened to us. We had many, many meetings. And they had settled in on three different uh, uh, op- uh, options of how we were going to do this. And uh, that, that cancellation came out of the blue, uh, caught us a little, we were surprised. And uh, at the end of the day, the, the method of doing it um, worked out. Uh, we sent, um, so we usually send 67 trucks into Arlington. They're not completely full because if we filled everyone and had less than 67, people would be walking too far. So, so we ended up um, palletizing all the loads. The loads were unloaded by uh, forklifts on the ground. And then the Army and others, uh, active members, uh, laid the wreaths. And um, so I didn't witness that. Our drivers, of course, were disappointed because it's usually so much more of an interaction with the uh, folks that come in and lay the wreaths and what have you. So it was a little sterile in that manner. But we still got it done. And then the um, the Army also uh, coordinated the wreaths up. And I was there for that. And I my hat's off to uh, people came out of the Pentagon. People came out of the uh, Joint Base um, um uh, the one that's right there, uh, part of part of um, the, the land there. I'm sorry, can't think of it. And uh, in record time, they picked up every one of those reeds, cleaned up, got them all into the dumpsters where it can all be uh, recycled into energy. And uh, and it happened. And uh, those members were all honored. The other thing that happened, a little different, that worked out well, that um, maybe they'll replicate in other parts of the country, is we had a day set aside for family members. And... Um, so family members could were able to come uh, a day ahead of time and actually lay their wreaths on their uh, loved ones 
instead of trying to do it on Reef Day with the masses of folks. So that that was a nice twist that happened, and uh, maybe it made a special made a special for them, which is awesome, and it really shows the support that you really have in the community that uh, people really love what you're doing, and and it uh, you're doing so much to remember our soldiers, and it also. It, it gives closure, I think, to families. Um, they're able to honor their loved ones and think for a moment uh, what this person's done. Um, mm-hmm. it, yeah. Because they should never be forgotten when, you, you know, they, they've made the ultimate sacrifice. Yeah, and there's 247,000 plus headstones in Arlington. And, uh, of course, Arlington is the poster child, and we don't want to forget all the others. But in that hollow ground there, um, you've got Civil War dead all the way through. And uh, I'm sure there's many a headstone that has uh, long been forgotten or um, maybe never was visited. And uh, for for the not not us, but for the, the, the good people in the area that and I and, you know, I want to say the people from the surrounding areas. I've met people from as far as away as Nevada that make a point to fly out there. And they don't even this, this these folks I met one time don't even have any people in Arlington. They they just like the idea and they come out and lay wreaths. So yeah. to be able to let the general public and good hearted Americans do something kind um, that way um, is amazing. How one wreath I say this all the time. It's amazing how one wreath can move somebody. Yes. Um, uh, you know, I, I could just tell you stories upon stories about how I've seen it. And um, it always impresses me. You know, it just impresses me how it, how it can matter to people. Well, people start really, really realizing it's more than just a marker. There's a person there. Oh, yeah. There's you a know. story. Yes. Yeah. And a life. And, yeah. and oh, absolutely. And yeah. that's why what you. You know, the other, the other thing I, I think about all the time is that, you know, they're not just casualties war casualties there could be uh, somebody that that, you know did their four years and moved on but they were there ready for the call um yeah any anybody that 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 you know puts the hand on the bible and 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 swears to uphold the constitution and and um and do what they do uh they they will run to the fighting and run to the the sound of, of of gunfire and and allow us to run in the other direction whether they whether they, you know, pushed a pencil and drove a desk or were in a, a foxhole in World War I, um, they're all ready to serve, and uh, it matters to recognize that way. And some of them might have uh, uh, done their part and got out and lived a long life and, um, and influenced other people along the way and, and are buried there, and we honor them as much as we do the, um, you know, the, the Bronze Star, Gold Star um, uh, members people that are buried there as well absolutely and, and that's the way it should be because there there are heroes no doubt we're talking with don queenie of reads across america this is the truckers network radio show on tnc radio dot live i'm shelly johnson here with tom kelly and tom kirk we'll be back with more from don queenie coming up definitely stay tuned there's some great information here finding a safe place to park oh. your rig at night can be a challenge on the road The Truckers Network, a membership resource site for trucking companies, company drivers, and owner-operators, proudly partners with Truck Park to offer safe and secure overnight truck parking to all Truckers Network members. Truck Park is the digital truck parking leader and America's fastest-growing truck parking service. The Truckers Network exists to link truck drivers with the best quality trucking products and services the industry has to offer. Finding safe overnight parking is crucial for truck drivers, and many drivers struggle with finding available parking spots. The limited parking availability causes drivers to lose sleep, which poses a safety risk to others on the road. Safe parking is valuable for drivers and the cargo they're transporting. With this partnership, Truckers Network members will have access to a discount code and be able to reserve parking spots in real time along their truck route at a reduced price. Truck Park gives drivers access to parking locations across most of the United States. Simply enter the city and state to view available parking spaces nearest to pickup or delivery point, then pay to reserve. Parking rates vary at each location, with some rates as low as $10. Truck Park is a values-based company that empowers truck drivers while providing a safe and unmatched experience. 
The company offers a quick way to find and reserve parking spots throughout the U.S. Truck drivers have access to Truck Park's free mobile app to easily begin reserving parking spots based on their truck route. About the Truckers Network. The Truckers Network exists to link truckers and trucking businesses throughout the United States. The company's mission is to make the life of a truck driver easier by connecting drivers to the highest quality trucking products and services to keep their trucks on the road. For the latest in Houston traffic, weather, news, and information, don't miss the Evening Surge weekdays from 4 to 6 p.m. on TNCRadio.live. TNC Radio.Live presents Drivers Remember, Drivers Honor. Many drivers have lost a friend or family member who made the ultimate sacrifice while serving their country. This is an opportunity to remember these fallen heroes. On Memorial Day, Monday, May 31st, TNC Radio.Live will suspend normal operations and dedicate 24 hours to the best patriotic music ever produced along with remembrances and memorials from commercial drivers. Send us your memory of a fallen hero. Email us at memorial at tncradio.live. You can also attach an audio file or submit the text you would like to have us read on your behalf. You can also leave a 90-second message by calling 862-297-4114. That's TNC 297-4114. This is the Truckers Network radio show on TNC Radio. Live. I'm Shelly Johnson here with Tom Kelly, and we're talking with Don Queenie of Wreaths Across America. He's got some marvelous stories, and, and this organization does some phenomenal things for our veterans and our fallen soldiers. Don, you had mentioned first mile driver experience. Uh, what exactly is that? Yeah, so that's something that I came up with having had, or I am a driver from time to time, I'm driving today. Uh, but when I started this, I, I started out um, as a uh, owner of a small company, small trucking company. I was in a truck, I, I picked up some wreaths. And honestly, and I tell the folks up there, I said, if my pickup experience wasn't very good. It was a, a rainy night, uh, very, very cold, and I was wet and tired by the time I got out of there. Um, but my experience at destination was in Arlington and, um, and I got to experience that and it hooked me and, and forever changed, you know, changed my life. Um, so when we have drivers, whether it's a driver who's chosen to do this has asked his. Hello. Test. Yeah, I lo- think we may have lost Don. Yeah, we lost Don for a moment. Well, I guess what we'll do is uh, we'll try to get Don back on, and maybe uh, well, we could... Uh, yeah, let's take just a moment to talk about uh, the, the piece that just played and uh, what we're doing for Memorial Day. Mm-hmm. And, that sounds uh, great. Uh, so uh, hopefully Don will be able to uh, dial back in here real quick. But uh, while he's out... Uh, so Memorial Day, uh, uh, here at TNC Radio, uh, all of us have loved ones who have uh, been lost. And uh, we got to talking and decided, you know, what would be good is to honor them in some way. And then it kind of grew from that, Shelly. And, and so we're going to spend the day, all 24 hours, playing patriotic music. And in between songs, and not necessarily every song, but in between songs, Uh, We're inviting our drivers and our listeners and each other and anybody we come across, really, uh, to share their memories uh, with us. And it doesn't matter how long. It can be 90 seconds. It can be 20 minutes. uh, We'll make it work. So if if there's somebody out there and they'd like to uh, uh, hear more uh, uh, about that and hear more about what's going on with uh, Memorial Day, check out our website. And uh, there's a Memorial Day website. uh, it's the top of the menu. You can go over there and learn more about that and, and uh, send us a note. If you got any questions, we'll uh, be happy to follow back up with you. But would love to hear uh, your story, uh, your remembrance of, uh, of one of our fallen heroes. And, yes. you know, <laughs> and, Tom, we do have Don back on the line with us. Oh, wonderful. Hello, Don. 
Hi, hi. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Um, yeah. We could just blame the phone company. That's all. You know. There we go. Why not? <laughs> so, if you wanted to pick up where, where you uh, left off, yeah, um, yeah. So, first mile. Everybody understands what first mile, last mile is. Um, so, for us, is trying to give those uh, drivers um, who may not be getting that that emotional, wonderful experience at the last mile when they're delivering those wreaths. Some of our drivers and carriers uh, will deliver to our cross docks. Maybe they do a key exchange en route. Maybe they deliver to a um, the back of a uh, business into their coolers for uh, uh, ahead of time for somebody else to come get on retail. Whatever it may be, I want to offer them a uh, experience on the front end. So the first mile driver experience, um, so long as the driver uh, budgets enough time for himself, we will uh, make him a uh, replica dog tag of a, of a family member or whoever he wants to honor. Uh, we will take him into our tip land, into the forest where these uh, uh, balsam trees are, where we get our material to make all of these wreaths, where we have been for a number of years now allowing people to uh, place a dog tag on the, on the tree, on the branches of a tree that becomes their family tree. And we just ask that we are allowed to go back to their family tree every three years and tip the new growth off of the branches. So uh, the driver uh, will be able to do that. We have a, uh, a grove that's dedicated to professional truck drivers, and they can do that. They can say the name. They can tell us about the, the person that they're honoring by placing this dog tag. And then we uh, bring them to a uh, private tour uh, of our museum uh, where we have a, uh, it's a combination uh, military museum and history of wreaths across America. And, um, and then we'll also take them back to the driver's lounge and have them make their own wreath. We have a small mechanical, uh, or manual, I should say, uh, wreath-making machine there, and they'll make a wreath for themselves to take home with them, and uh, they'll learn a lot about Wreaths Across America and a lot about what we're doing, and hopefully um, we'll have them interested in coming back and doing this uh, year after year. What a wonderful program. I love it, and, and I'm sure the yeah. drivers really appreciate that very, very much. What is the best way, Don, for people to volunteer? I know that there are different ways people could get involved with your organization. Yeah. Yeah, I like to, uh, I like to do that. I like to talk about um, the simplest ways first because uh, I've spoken to so many people in public settings, and I don't want them to think I'm trying to pick their pocket and, and get $15 for a balsam wreath out of them. We have so about a minute I, and a half. So. Okay. Um, so, the, well, real quickly, the easiest way is to, uh, the easiest, simplest way is to, to participate in laying wreaths on December 18th. Take your children, take your grandchildren, rent a kid if you have to, lay wreaths. You can uh, donate and sponsor wreaths by going to our website and doing it that way. Or you can take it a step further and uh, become involved and become a volunteer and help us uh, spread the mission. We do work on this year-round, and there's plenty of opportunity to participate. And then to your carriers and drivers out there, I'm always looking for more capacity. I'm looking for some local hubs in certain cities where a small uh, somebody with some straight truck fleet can participate. Uh, please reach out to me at dqueeny, D-Q-U-E-E-N-E-Y, at wreathsacrossamerica.org. Awesome. And people can visit your website and, and reach out that way, too. That's uh, wreathacrossamerica.org. And I'm seeing on the website there are a number of places where people can click for more information and they can learn more about your organization, which is just doing a phenomenal job for our veterans and our fallen heroes. Thank you so much, Don, for your involvement. Uh, this is a tremendous honor that you're, you're paying to our the people who have made the ultimate well, your, sacrifice. Your organization's recognition of us and having us have our, our time in your. TNC radio dot live. Your commercial driver navigation station. Hi, this is Tom Kelly, managing partner of Emsico LLC doing business as tncradio.live the website tncradio.live and any content or podcast related to the website are copyrights of Emsico LLC copyright 2021 all rights reserved any redistribution or reproduction of all or any part of the contents in any form is prohibited other than the following we welcome you to download and play the publicly available podcast 
and share with others for personal use. Please acknowledge TNCRadio.live as the source of the material. You may not, except with our express written permission, distribute or commercially exploit the content. And while we endeavor to keep the information up to date and correct, we make no representations or warranties of any kind expressed or implied about the completeness, accuracy, reliability, suitability, or availability with respect to the website, the podcast, or the information, products, services, or related graphics contained on the website or podcast for any purpose. Any reliance you place on such information is therefore strictly at your own risk. For additional information, including details regarding monetization of this podcast, send email to podcasts at tncradio.live.live.live.live.